Building the Brick Arched Viaduct First I determined how wide the arch needed to be. This is my second attempt at this. On my first try, cutting out the bridge, the arch was not large enough and rolling stock on the outside track, the one nearest the edge, were hitting their top corners. So I built another one. This one. I decided to let you watch as I made it this time since I got past the dirty and rather boring job of cutting out the two sides in the shop. I also cut two blocks the same length and glued and screwed the sides together, being careful to get them lined up. The first pair I cut out separately and learned my lesson. They were not the same. This time I taped them together when it came time to use the bandsaw. The next thing was to install the supports for the roadbed, which I planned to make from 1 8 inch plywood and 1 8 by 1 quarter inch basswood, which I keep in stock. I wanted to be sure that when vehicles are on the viaduct, you can still see the windows. The last viaduct I scratch built, the sides were too high and completely blocked the view of vehicles on the bridge unless it was a double decker bus. I used my table saw to rip a piece of plywood, the 8th inch plywood, that was just wide enough to fit between the two sides, and marked it and then took it out and cut it in my miter saw. I used a plate to determine how big the arch needed to be. and I was able to use the cutoff piece of the ripped board for the other end. I'm demonstrating how a car could possibly just jump the gap in the bridge and I wouldn't have to fill it in but I decided I probably needed to fill it in 70 millimeters that's about right or that's about right I guess it doesn't really make that much difference as long as it looks somewhat reasonable actually the height of the arch is not reasonable but I did that on purpose because I wanted to be able to see underneath and see the other two arches of the tunnel and possibly see the arches of the other end of the tunnel underneath this arch. Also, the, the bridge approach is pretty short but I didn't really have room to make it any longer and since this is a model railway I decided it would have to do. Here I am trying to get the right size to cut for the pieces that go across to bridge the gap. When I, where I put the stop was a little bit too far down so Instead of moving it, I started piling tape up until I got them the right length. At that point, it was production time. Here we go. It only took half as many as I needed to get the length right. Even one or two needed slight adjustments, but it, basswood works so easily that that was not a problem. And it's so much stronger than balsa wood. It must be multiple times stronger. I don't like to put glue directly on what I'm working on. It tends to be runny and run all over the place. So I put it on a piece of paper and either dab it on with a stick or I put the ends in. You probably saw me doing the same thing when I built the wooden fence for the other layout. 
it's dripping so I put a piece of paper under it to keep the glue from getting on my table. I think some already got on my table and I'll have to uh, get that off of there but right now I want to get these on. I have a clamp on one end so that that roadbed piece won't move. It was sliding down and that was annoying. So now I've clamped the whole thing together so it'll dry close. Oh, it's already dry. Oh, days fly when you're working on a model railway. So now what I'm doing is putting DAP, my favorite substance, on the roadbed to make it smooth. I'll take the, the boards out of the middle and make it a nice smooth surface. I wound up cutting a short stick. Actually, it came off a paint stick the right length so that it fit between the sides and got in there and really did a nice job. It came in handy later because I was able to wrap sandpaper around it and sand the surface till I got it really smooth. It took two coats, but I'm not going to show you both coats. You get the idea. First coat was okay, but I wanted to do better than that. So that's coat one. And you're not going to see coat two. Better cap it up. A little sandpaper, that's 400 grit sandpaper, which works perfect for this drywall stuff because it's, it's actually pretty tender. It's not completely set up right now. And uh, I was, you know, impatient and everything as usual. So I uh, went ahead and sanded it anyway. But the other thing that it does is it makes it really easy to sand. Then you have to get all the dust off. And that's what I use for my roads. It's a, it's a chalkboard paint. And I, I can get a bottle like that for around $3. And it'll probably make every road on the new layout. Those are chunks of wallboard mud that I dry specifically for this. Because it makes a very fine dust but not too fine if you use dust that's too fine like a talc then it doesn't look right but it gives you a nice smooth gray dusty look Isn't that pretty? Here's the monument to all the wives of modelers around the world. I got it done and um, I've installed it here. The area is not fun, done, but right this specific spot is done. I'll get to the rest of it someday. I'm going to move on and continue with the major structures and I'll come back at some point in the future and detail all this.